Well, welcome to CTV Sports. I'm Dale Schwetz. And I'm Jan Eric Frank. And we are live for the 2024 USPA Regional President's Cup. And we're bringing you this live from the Grand Champions Polo Club. And uh, we have a very, uh, very good game today with Audi going against Rafu Polo. Jan? We do indeed. And let's just give you a quick rundown of... Uh uh, Audi and Raful, remember they have already played a game. Audi winning their first game, beating Grand Champions Polo Club by 12 goals to 10. Audi then led by Milo McDonough at number one. At least that's how we had them last uh, uh, last time. Let's make sure that uh, he still is wearing that number one. You can see on your screens there with the number four. And that is Mark Ganzi. At number two, Dig Singh. He's a one goal. And uh, number three is... Uh, Martin Hauregi playing off six goals. Raful Polo, as I said, they lost their opening game against Pony Express by eight goals to 13. Slight change in the lineup today. We've got Rebecca Cohen at number one, playing off minus one. Then we've got uh, the Swiss American Tito Gaudenzi playing the number two, who is today playing the number three, beg your pardon. And then we've got Juan Bellini and Dami Balladinelli making up Raful Polo. You got it, Rita. We'd like to take a moment. Uh, here at CTV Sports and the Grand Champions Polo Club to wish a very good friend and special individual, Bob Jernavis, a speedy and positive recovery. And we'd also like to extend that, dedicate this game to him. Yes, indeed. So just going back to those, uh, those that lineup then, uh, as I just said, Tito Gaudenzi today, uh, he's the man on the left of your screen there playing the number three. Rebecca Cohen is uh, playing the number one position. Now, normally, Signor Bellini will play the number four. That would then leave Dami Bellardinelli at the number two. Let's just make sure that, that is really the case. They do like to do that to us and uh, do a little switcheroo. And uh, Audi, as I say, Milo McDonough uh, playing the number one, Dick Singh at two. Martin Hauregi at three, and Mark Ganzi, who we've already seen playing with the number four on our show. And there is Juan Bellini, so that is correct. He is playing the number four. So that means Dami Bellardinelli will be playing the number two. Yeah, and this, uh, this should be a new team here. They should mix well. Um, as Dami is a, uh, he's a worker, a worker B, as we say. He, uh, he gets a lot done. I like to see him wearing the number two today. I think they'll line up well with uh, Tito and uh, Juan, two big hitters. And Rebecca has just taken her game to another level. Good shot of Captain uh, Mark Ganzi. Right there, this is, a, this is a big game here, remember, with the uh, 2024 USPA Regional Presidents Cup, uh, four teams here in, this, uh, in our region here and uh, with the Grand Champions Pole Club. Two brackets, uh, bracket one, Pony Express and Audi. And at the moment, Pony Express, what a showing they had with uh, Santos Bellini, mm. Justin Daniels, uh, Benji Daniels, and Grant Ganzi. We had an opportunity to, to interview and talk to Grant Ganzi. We were actually talking to him about the finals today, the Palm Beach Open that he's playing in um, with the uh, Casablanca team against Travieso, but we also spoke a little bit about this Pony Express team. Very happy with the team, winning 13-8 to over Raful Polo. So this is a huge game here for Raful Polo. Um, that uh, could put them uh, put them in the spot as they are 0-1 at the moment. Audi is 1-0. So Audi could uh, put them. And remember, the two top teams in out of the four – in the uh, cross bracket, the two top teams will play each other in the semi mm -hmm. to head and play uh, play in the big final. And that'll be at the MPC. And, of course, uh, this is uh, what it's all about, is uh, getting to the National President's Cup, established in uh, 1998. The Regional President's Cup was uh, reformatted in anticipation of the 2024 National President's Cup. And uh, Florida having, uh, well, a couple different circuit, circuits. Uh, they host it for the National President's Cup. And it's the only exception where we have four regions 
for the President's Cup events. It is awarded uh, to the International Polo School in Loxahatchee. Also um, here they have the uh, Port Mayaka Polo Club in Okeechobee, Grand Champions Polo Club, of course, here in Wellington, and the Villages Polo Club and Villages. Of course, you got to win your region to, uh, to get to the National President's Cup. And uh, this is... Uh, it's a great tournament because the Regional President's Cup tournament is held nationwide and now serves as qualifying tournaments for the National President's Cup, bringing teams together, representing clubs from around the country for, uh, for the opportunity to compete at the National Polo Center. So it, it's a lot of fun because it brings uh, the players from all over the uh, nation together, and uh, there's a lot of bragging rights. Oh, yeah. You know? A lot of bragging rights in this, uh, Yan, at an eight goal level also. And believe it or not, that's one of the most uh, competitive and played in the United States with right. the eight and 12 goal. You know, we have the 20, we have the 26, we have the World Pole League, and you have the uh, U U.S. Open is held at 22 goals at the NPC. But, uh, you know, the majority of the polo is the grassroots polo, which is played in the eight and 12 level. Here we go then. Balls in play. And as you said, Dale, uh, Audi, of course, with a one and out. So um, a lot at stake here for Raffle Polo. Well, they won the first throw in, but it's going to be picked up straight away here by uh, Martin Hauregi. It's a little bit of pressure there from uh, Raffle by Dami Belladinelli. Here we go then with Audi revving up that engine. They want to keep it clean and uh, make it a two and O. Oh. There was the ball up to the front door. Near side pick up there by Milo McDonough. Overrides. Left behind and in comes Bellini. Bellini now will uh, get the attacking going here for Raffle Polo. A little bit too far out to reach, but Bellini backing up his man very nicely. Picks up the ball off the boards. And uh, he'll be looking for a nice long deep shot down to the front. Either Gaudenzi, who slams on the brakes there. Just beaten to it by the number two little attempt with an under the next shot. Bouncing ball, not an easy one to do, but the first shot on goal coming there from Dami Bellavinelli. And he comes from right to left, gets in there quickly. Looks like uh, Martin is looking for the, the foul, but he is very quick, Dami. As I said, at the number two, and they're going to need him to be, uh, to be the hustler today because this uh, number three... And when I say that, I mean Martin Haregi. He is a polo playing machine at six goals, playing in the World Polo League. And uh, so you need to keep him under control. But on the move, it's going to be, look at this, Mark Gandhi trying to get out in front of Bellini, hooked up. Everybody overrides, picked up and taken in. And it'll be Dig. Yeah, I couldn't control it. Down the line once again comes uh Ganzi, Bellini just putting his stick down, stopping that run to uh, through goal. He would have, uh, I'm pretty sure, put that one away. Now then, that ball up for Gaudenzi. Slams on the brakes, turned around very quickly. You were just talking about the machine. There he is on the ball, keeping uh, Audi and all the four players within that half of Raffle Polo. Ganzi going for the shot, but a whistle will stop the action. First whistle of the game. You know, they get the hustle play, and here's what I'm talking about. Number three in the white. Keep an eye on him. Once he gets going, he's going to make things happen. He gets his ball right down in front, and you have a bunch of players just clogging up the area there. And, uh, well, Martin's going to take it right to the hoop, as we say. And as they try to converge on there, they're going to block him. So you're going to get the blocking foul. So we'll get our first right-of-way violation call today. We have umpires LLC calling the game today. And it'll be a open goal penalty two, 30-yard shot. And as always, no mistake, very solid there for Mark Ganzi picking up uh, the first score of the match. Yeah, we got to uh, try to stop Martin early. If he gets around the corner on you, that's when you have trouble. So you either need to get him earlier, pick him up, put him put him on it, put him on the hip, or uh, you're gonna have to be uh, you have to be careful because once he gets going to goal at six goals in uh, eight goal polo, he is uh, he's gonna cause a commotion, and uh, he does it 
with a lot of pace, and his team will work around them. Back to the center, we will switch directions. After every bowl, after every goal scored on the bowlings, it's going to be Haragi. Now then, who's he going to play it to? Sending everybody over that halfway line. Yeah, puts a lot of thought into all of his plays, his passes. That one's going to go out to the left-hand side a little bit too deep. Now then, yeah, I was going to say, a little bit too deep there for Milo McDonough to get a piece of. So as you said, Dale, a lot of power. And uh, Audi very early on here, revving up that, uh, that engine. Yeah, and I like to see him go early here with uh, Milo. If they can get Milo in the game a bit more, that's going to get Bellini his uh, his big number, his large number, the number on his back, uh, facing the direction they want, and that's what they want. They want him. They want him backing the ball, getting you know having to chase Milo, so they can get that offensive attack going, and that way that's going to shut down the Grand Champions Polo Club offense. Here's the back shot from Haragi. That ball is going to go, bit of an angle there. And uh, Gardenzi is going to come from the side. And we get a right away violation. So penalty 5A. And that'll be quickly taken yeah, by uh, Bellini. He's just going to tap that one into play. Sends it out towards the boards. Looking for, and he's found his number two dummy, Bellinelli. Working it on the near side. In comes McDonough to try and clear it. Left behind now for, uh, oh no, he's got a piece of it. Gaudenzi again jumping on that line. Milo McDonough, a little under the neck, tap. Uh, had a bit of a trouble, a little bit of a problem there controlling his mallet. Little swing and on the near side, first touch, I believe, for Digsing. And that ball will just jump over the sideboard, so we'll have our first change of possession yeah but this is good this is what uh you want out of the audi team get uh milo and dig in the game and get them working a little bit and that'll give opportunities for uh Ganzi and haregi to come through so here we go on the penalty five or on the change of possession big hit by bellini backed up hard by haregi off the pony turned around by tito uh-oh yeah, but uh, outplayed, and uh, Haregi. Broken mallet. Yeah, broken mallet. Can now only really t t focus on the man. Uh, in comes Singh. Singh, first touch, not ideal. The backhand shot there from Bellini, left for Milo. Milo will turn things around, leaving it for uh, Ganzi. And uh, Ganzi yeah, will have to try and somehow get round Gaudenzi. In comes Singh again, Bellini appealing, saying, surely I was on that line before anybody else. Well, yeah, they had an opportunity here, and uh, I know that the Audi team would love to have that back because even when Haregi broke his mallet, he took Bellini out, but everybody overrode the ball. <laughs> they all were going forward. And uh, then they spun around. And uh, Martin's going to go ahead and get a new mallet and a fresh pony. Why not? With uh, two minutes left. Looks like uh, Milo down there changing out. So you are going to get a 5B. Uh, this riding in from behind is the call. Bellini. Knocks it back into play, as you say. Just uh, two minutes remaining here in this first jocker. Just the one goal so far. And that was a penalty two. Scored and converted by... The number four in white, Mark Ganzi, but on the turn, Haregi. Martin sends everybody on a force uh, goose chase out to the right, plays it to the left. Here comes the pass, literally on the halfway line. He's looking for Singh and or Milo McDonough. Can the, I was going to say, can he keep the ball in play this time? Looks like it still is within the boundaries of the field. Remember, 300 by 160 yards wide. So there's a lot of area to cover. Raful can untangle themselves, but as they do, another whistle to the disbelief there. As you can see, Gansi not quite understanding what happened there. I wouldn't mind having another look at this. So they were very close to that uh, back line. Singh gets a piece of it. Gansi comes in for a hook. And then there you have the whistle. 
Yeah, so when he hooks, he clean play, but then Bellini reads it well and gets behind the following player. So it's like falling over the the line after you back shot. You hit a back shot, but you fall over the line. So Mark makes the makes the hook, but then he falls in between the two players. And Bellini, very smart, you know, former eight goal player. We talked about it. He gets on that line, and a great play by Mark. Um, and even if he did move the ball, he'd, he'd have to allow Juan to yeah. go through. It's kind of one of those plays the player cannot just disappear. No, so, no. Riding's found the second man is a call, 5B, but out he's going to win this uh, defense again. They're going to get it going. Down to within the last minute of play then. And uh, Raffle clearly showing teeth here. They... Uh, do not want to give Audi uh, an easy ride, but Haregi seems to be just waltzing through that raffle defense, leaving everybody behind still. Haregi just before the uh, the first uh, bell or the first hooter. And uh, once again, Haregi, yeah, and then, well, I would be, uh, well, they're not going to blow on that one. I thought that Haregi might get a, a whistle there, but uh, they're letting them play, and Bellini will knock that one over the sideboards. So that'll end the chucker. We'll send him off here. And, uh, well, one goal on an open goal penalty, two by Mark Ganzi. Otherwise, two goals on handicap for a fool. That'll keep it at two to one. And we'll be back for the 2024 USPA Regional President's Cup. Let's see, we're getting the opening shot with Jasper. Well, I'd like to say happy birthday. Jasper, one of our crew here at CTV Sports, and uh, always one of our end zone crew. And also Mr. Matthews today. It's Mr. Matthews' birthday. Howdy, Matthews. Yeah. Oh, well, one of our international umpires. Correct. So, can, uh, we got happy birthday to, to Roddy, one of our international umpires, and of course, Jasper, one of our top videographers that uh and they have uh, been very very busy our videographers during the season here filming everything from six to 26 goals <clears throat> and uh it's been fun here with the uh 24 24 uh 2024 uspa regional president's cup so thanks for joining us this is uh it's competitive competitive eight goals especially you know they're all fighting to get to that that next level you know, where they can they get to the National President's Cup. So, here we go. Change of possession. Cop on the pitch. It's going to be Haregi. And he's working it, working it, trying to get around uh, Belladinelli. In comes Gaudenzi. There is the attempted back shot. Left now for Ganzi. Ganzi can open those shoulders. Cleverly done. But just puts it wide. Very close in front of goal. Ooh, no bad luck there. Yeah. But I liked again. They're working well. They they have Milo and Dig involved, and that's giving uh, Martin and Mark opportunities. And uh, the more opportunities they get, 
the uh, the goals are going to come. So here we go on a knock in. Big ball by Bellini looking for Dammy. But intercepted by Milo. He's going to leave it for Hauregi. Hauregi will try and run this one himself. He can get round the outside of uh, Belladinelli. Yeah, too far to pick up that ball on the near side. But uh, Milo, of course, in the perfect position, will pick it up on his stick side. Ball goes out of bounds. A little bit of hit and uh, stop and go at the moment. There's no real flow yet to this game. Yeah, and this is just a good play here by Haregi. Uh, Milo, he'll, he'll learn this. He just needs to hit that ball a little further. He, he tapped it down the line when he should have hit to the goal because that's where uh, Bardinelli comes and makes uh, the hook on him, but he gets the safety out of it. Yeah. So in the end, it's not. it doesn't hurt them. They're going to get an opportunity here at the penalty six. As you go, Milo, very young professional player. One of the youngest players to play in the World Polo League to 26 goals. And, um, wow, he played really well last year when he oh, when, he, when he filled in. I think, absolutely. I think he was half the size he is now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they grow so quick. I was talking to his mom, Mercedes, and she uh, she says, yeah, they, they're, not, they're not babies anymore. And here we go. Martin with the penalty six. 60-yard shot from the angle. Off to the right. Uh, he didn't. Uh, he didn't hit that cleanly. I'm sure, he'd like to have another go at that. So once again, Rafael Polo knocking it in from their own back line, and as always, a job for Juan Bellini. Drills one towards that halfway line, but uh, it'll be picked up and sent back by. Ganzi looking to feed the ball to Haregi every single time. Now coming across, but clearly with enough space for there not to be any potential danger. Dig Sig, Sing. I like the way the, the distance, they've been calling the distance very, very, yeah. very consistent. Yeah. Tight, uh, they're given to get tight, but, but at Eco Polo, they're playing at speed. So I like the way they've been calling the distance is very, very, very consistent. On the move again, Audi. Gaudenzi overrides, wants to stick with his man. Haregi drills one down the field. And uh, that's got uh, Ganzi's name on it. And he got a piece of it. Now we've seen people play shots just like that, and they go in. Wow, he almost did it also in your favorite uh, spin word. Yeah. From the UK. Yeah. We actually adopted the English spin yes he almost did it there he almost did and indeed. that's not an easy shot from where he hit it from on the knock in Bellini again and then if uh, I, I don't know if uh I'm correct here yeah but it looks uh, it seems to me like uh the uh Ruffle polo team is knocked in about 10 times yeah. already yeah in two chuckers so Audi has been peppering the goal here comes Horegi and uh, will he go for the direct hit? I uh, think that he... ball's got eyes all yeah. day. Okay. Oh, oh. He, two white players, two, well, I say white players, two Audi players. Then remember, they're in the white shirts, nearly getting a piece of that. That was a perfect pass from Martin Hauregi. This time he's going to try and work it in himself. Still Hauregi, maybe uh, the finishing touch, a deflection, the backhand as he found a little gap. He has, after a lot of hard work, Hauregi picking up uh, his first goal. Yeah, I like the way he brings this ball. And watch how he stays offside here. And then he, he goes to the man. Watch, he goes near side back to the offside. And I think Dammy thought he was gonna he was gonna stay near side, but he kind of did a little switcheroo there and went for the offside, bounces off a pony, good D by a fool, but then a, a crafty little tail shot to get the finish. Crafty. I like that, though. You like that? He was working hard. You said it. I mean, he was he was by himself, and there were three uh, blue jerseys around him. But that's what you'll get out of Haregi. He's a worker. Here we go, then. The equalizer is uh, achieved. So that was, uh, I'm sure, the first box that needed to be ticked here from, uh, from Audi. Remember those two goals for Ruffle given on handicap. Going through the middle there, and Dammy had that ball on his come across. And then you have a, a number of uh, Audi players coming down the right of way there. 
And I think the, uh, the rough pool polo team is going to take advantage of this. Uh, ball's down in there. Uh, good shot there of Dig. As he changes horses. He had a great game in his uh, yeah, he did. dig. He, uh, he scored um, three goals with two from the field. We gave him the penalty one. That's the way you and I do it. Whoever actually gets fouled, but it is a team goal. But uh, he did get, he got uh, two from the field and the penalty one we gave him. So did he, you know, they worked it, they worked it well. <laughs> they moved around the field very well. They had a, they missed a few penalties, but otherwise they were good 80, 80%. 80 uh, percent. So that ball's going to go just wide. So another knock-in for uh, Raffle Polo. Bellini out to the right-hand side. He seems to be choosing or preferring that right-hand side a bit more than the left. But again, only as far as Martin Hauregi. Yeah, Pony not helping things very much there, but it's still his right-of-way, still his line. Now the whistle will come. You can see that Bellini was trying to get out of the way there. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe because... Because Martin's horse took a couple steps back. Damn, he thought he could get in there. But once you go 90, you're going to get the whistle. And, you know, it's very easy to see for the umpires when a player goes 90 degrees. So, um, but like I said, it looked, uh, maybe he thought, but it was a great recovery by, uh, by Martin Haregi when he spun around there. But a little bit of a... Um, I guess stall right there in the middle of the field. So they're going to bring that down to the 60, and they're going to move it to the 40. So they're going to get the open goal and dead center. No mistake whatsoever. So goal number two from the line for uh, Martin Hauregi, and that puts Ali in the lead for the first time. Two and a half minutes remaining here in the second chucker. And... Uh, after this sort of... Well, no goals by Raffle no, yet. No, It's been, like I said, it's kind of been... They've been playing great defense. <clears throat> because, like I said, they uh, what they had of uh, at least eight knock-ins. At least. So let's hope things uh, open up a little bit and we get a bit more of a flowy game going. Now, this could be a chance here for Milo. Young Milo McDonough. Yeah, nicely done from the throw-in. He's got Gaudenzi behind. Can Gaudenzi beat McDonough? Well, he can't beat him, but he's definitely done enough to uh, force that error, which is to put the ball wide. Surprising, really, because normally Milo, very confident, very, very... Uh, yeah, that's that's when he's in his uh, comfort zone, you could say. But he hasn't had a lot of runs, but the more runs he'll get, that's what I'm saying, the more you can get Milo and Dig in the game, that strengths the team. It's going to be Rebecca. Here comes Mark. Beg your pardon, in comes Martin. Mark tucks in behind. Still Hauregi. Uh, can he avoid the hook from Bellini? Tries to cut across. Waits for the ball to come back to him. Hauregi, well, that's uh, it's like taking a dog for a walk in the park. His third goal here, Dale. A hat trick for Martin Hauregi in chucker number two. Yeah, great chucker here by Martin. And he just turns that ball up, takes it down. And keeps it in between two of the raw fool players and does it all by himself there. As we click down, you might get one more bowl in. I think you're not enough time. As. Yep. They go get it. And here you go. And how do you have it one more time? This time, Mark Anzi. Yeah, you might play this out to the right hand side where Milo is going. You might have seen him just disappear on the. Left side of your screen, Gansy's going to have to chase his own ball. In comes Singh, turned around by Belladinelli, but uh, very quickly, and look at, oh. Well, it's going to go through, but did Mark push it through, or did Martin's? No, Mark's going to get that one. Mark's going to get that one. Okay. Yeah. As you see right here, Martin brings it, and Mark with the finish. Good, good recovery there because that mark actually started it and that'll end our second chucker play so we'll get everybody on some fresh ponies and we'll be right back stay with us here on ctv sports
All right, here we go. Third Chucker, 2024 USPA uh, Regional President's Cup. I'm Dale Schwetz. I'm Yan Eric Frank. A warm welcome. And Yan, it's been all Audi right now. Two uh, goals on handicap for Raful Polo. And uh, they have been peppering the goal. They have, they have five goals from the field. Well, two penalty shots and then three from the field. And um, look at they're going to go again. Here comes, uh, here comes Mark. Yeah, and Mark to try and make it uh, for a, a half dozen. A long shot. Beautiful. Yeah. Elegance in motion. Kay Golasso. Beautiful shot there by the Cobra. Nice stroke. That's, uh, that's the uh, Mark we're used to seeing. When he gets out front, takes that shot from a good 40, 50, in between the, the 30 and the 60 he likes to shoot from. That's his, his sweet spot. And it doesn't matter what speed or side. It could be a neck shot or a cut shot. But he's been very, very um, consistent this season with that. And that's going to be uh, his third of the day. Two from the field, one from the penalty line. And here we go, then Audi again on the move, winning the throw-in. It'll be Mila McDonough left behind, Belladinelli. And a whistle. So they come right out of the bowling. Milo. Offside, near side. Yeah. And that same similar we saw yeah. earlier. You have one yeah. player following another player. And... Um, so you'll get the turn call, but again, no, no different than than earlier when Mark was meeting, he kind of fell in between. In this case, now you have a player turning the ball in between two players, and um, so they'll take that ball down, and it'll be another opportunity here for the Audi team. Looks like uh, Martin Haregi with the uh, penalty four, 60-yard shot. Uh, not quite airborne enough. It came off Mark Gansey there, so a little uh, bit came up. off his own player, same own player, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's hit all of them low today. Sorry? Yeah. He's, he's hit all of his yeah. penalties low today. Yeah. A little, little different. You know, he's hitting it the same. So he just need to make a few adjustments on a knock-in, and Juan's going to start digging into his, his book of, of uh, set uh, plays, dead ball plays, you could call it. Polo plays from the knock in by Wambolini. <laughs> Gansey on the boards. Runs into some traffic as uh, Bellatinelli comes in. Let's have another closer look at this. Mark's got the ball, then he uh, loses it. Slight change of line. Yeah, well, because the line did have a, a slight change in direction there, so he did well to pick up that, uh, that call. And let's see where they're going to place the ball. Yeah, it comes off the boards kind of weird. I think Mark Tyler kind of bounced down for him. And then uh, you had uh, Dammy coming in there. So we're getting a lesser angle. So opportunity. Well, here you go. It's first opportunity for first penalty shot, I think, right? For mm -hmm. for the uh, Raful team. Mom Blaney. With an opportunity from the 60 yard mark. So penalty four. And uh, Juan knows at this time, not, not getting as many opportunities. This is a big one for him. Well, that's Boom. definitely airborne and definitely oh, straight. Oh, oh, oh. Yep, nicely done. Oh, that's like done. the old Wombly. Indeed. We were talking about that uh, yesterday when he was our special guest, that he uh, he really enjoys. And he always, he's always enjoyed taking the penalties and uh, understands the uh, – hasn't changed much, he said. He said just more practice. Practice and, and luck, <laughs> he says. But, uh, but he understands how big it is. And that's a huge play right now to get him going here. Let's see if they can get it going. Tito battling it out in the center. Yeah, but kind of gave it to Mark. 
He got lucky. Bernardinelli will pick it up on the near side. So uh, maybe that penalty four from Pombellini uh, was uh, the catalyst to get uh, this Raful team going because there is plenty of talent out there. Under the neck uh, shot attempt from Bellardinelli, possibly looking for Rebecca Cohen, if not a direct shot on goal. Went uh, slightly wide, so Audi have possession once again as uh, we come to the four and a half minute mark remaining here in the uh, final chaka of the first half. A little change switch here as uh, looks like Martin I thought Mark was going to follow him there, and he was going to go for the run. And Milo can stay near side. Well done. Well done, Milo. Exactly. That was the shot he had to play. Gaudenzi, again, not able to catch up with uh, the number one. I'd like to see Tito take, a, as you were saying, there a few more shots when he gets the chance. But uh, Hauregi, well, he's going to take this ball and get it uh, close to, if not within, he does, with a nice little... Uh, Near side backhand and Alan Ganzi in very difficult angle, but I do like uh, the idea that was behind that shot. Here we go then, Bella Dinelli to uh, send that ball back towards the east of the field. Remember this field, and I have been studying that very much. You taught me down east and west, of course. Raful playing from the west towards the east. Polini, and that's a nice ball out to the right-hand side for Rebecca Cohen. Gaudenzi tucks in behind, turns. Well done. Stopping Haregi from taking that ball and running with it. So uh, things are slowly starting to open up here for Raful. Mm -hmm. Good timing right before the half. Yeah, just to get it going a little bit, even though it's been, it's been all Audi at the moment. There's still a lot of pole left. And it's still Audi. In comes uh, Bellini. <laughs> Ball is still in play. Still, Juan Bellini. Aregi comes back. Did very well to uh, to hook him, but now already established on that line. Now there was enough gap there. Milo McDonough. McDonough around the outside if he can. Needs a little bit of help, which he gets from uh, Martin. And Martin puts it through. <laughs> well done, Milo. Milo falls into the rumble seat there behind. Martin sliding the gray mare in. And then Milo just falls in. Good teamwork. Then leaves it for the sixth goaler. Falls back in place. Martin gets the finish. So good rotation here by the Audi team here in the first half. Everybody kind of mixing it up well, covering each other's positions well. And uh, when Mark's... Marks forward, Milo or Dig is uh, is going back, and and then, uh, like I said, Martin's been the energizer bunny as usual, pushing along here. Um, get a whistle, and we'll stop the clock with 153. Might get a delay here. Let me see when he stops here. Yeah. Few more, few more touches there. So this will go in favor of the Raful team on the delay. So penalty five uh, A from the spot. Juan's going to shoot this one. Mm -hmm. Ooh, off the pony. Yeah, unlucky there off his own man as well. But uh, Tito coming back, picks it up nicely on the near side. But uh, Ganzi going up, wanting that ball to come from Hauregi. He sends it uh, right under the neck at a 90-degree angle. Powerful backhand shot and a very nicely timed shot there from Gaudenzi looking for Belladinelli. He couldn't uh, control it. So, again, Martin Hauregi picking up uh, the pieces here. He's got uh, Dixing on his, well, in front of him now. There is the pass. Looking for Milo McDonough, but he anticipated that ball coming uh, deep. So Bellini coming back and uh, picks up the, the ball from within his own half. Gaudenzi, nice pick up there. So back on the near side by, oh, hang on, 
picked up now by Bellini. Bellini, yeah, he can see he wants it. And Bellini... <sighs> saved. Ball is still in play. Very good defense here from Audi. And uh, Ding Sing trying to uh, pick it up on the near side there. Left behind for Milo McDonough. Ball is still within the boards. Needs to just get around the outside. Oh, well done, Milo. Milo McDonough now looks over his shoulder. Here comes uh, the finishing touch. He's got time. He's got time. And he scores. Yeah. Well done, Milo. That's Milo. Nice approach. Check your shoulder one time. Nice, easy touch here. Doesn't need to press it. Dead center. And uh, I believe he uh, beat the clock there, so that'll end our first half of play. So we'll send him off to the tents, uh, let him uh, get organized. Let's check our stats here. <laughs> there you go. Look at that. 15 shots compared to three. Yeah. And then, uh, well, look at the knock-in. Seven. And we called that. We called about seven or eight. So it makes mm -hmm. sense where we're at. So, um Rafun needs to get a few more shots, get it going, so we'll get them going. And uh, we'll be back for the second half of the 2024 USPA Regional President's Cup. Okay, welcome back, everybody, to CTV Sports. I'm Dale Schwetz. I'm um, yeah, and Eric Frank. And we are live from the Grand Champions Polo Club, field number four for the second half of the 2024 USPA Regional President's Cup, where we have Audi against Raful Polo. And, yeah, and you want to go through the players one more time? Good shot there. Milo McDonough had a great goal at the end of the third chucker. Indeed, he did. And he, of course, as you can see, wearing the number one for Audi at number two, Dig Singh, who uh, 
we haven't seen that much of, not compared to his last game. And um, but then uh, they got could... a lot done in the middle of the field, though. Yeah, he did. Working hard with the man. I was going to say doing the dirty clean work, as we say. Then uh, Martin Haregi, the sixth goaler, with a total of four goals to his name. Three in the second, one in the third. And very consistent, Mark Ganzi with a goal in all the first three. Well, one goal in the first three chuckers. For Raffle Polo, you can see you there, the only young lady player on the field this morning. Rebecca Cohn at number one. Dami Belladinelli at number two. Tito Godenzi at number three. <clears throat> and, of course, Juan Bellini, the only man to have scored from a penalty four, uh, picking up the only goal in, in addition to the two on handicap. So that's how they left the field with eight goals to three in favor of Audi. Yeah, biggest difference on the stats is uh, 17 shots or 15 or 17 shots for Audi and only about five sh shots for Raful, uh, seven knock-ins for Raful and about two knock-ins for Audi. So just that's the difference there. Raful needs to get a few more shots. A goal, Audi's been definitely cranking out the offense. <clears throat> and, um, well, they got eight goals, you know, so that's a good half, eight goals. You know, they're online for that 13 goals. And uh, so Raful just got to get their offensive attack going and uh, maybe get a few more shots. Otherwise, Audi playing good polo. Yep. You know, just... Um, They've been they've been peppering the goal on each side of the field on the on the east and west side, <clears throat> so and it's a big win here. They're looking to go two and zero, Audi. Remember, uh, they're coming in one and zero. Rough Fools coming in zero and one, and we are playing a four team cross bracket style. And we uh, we talked to Pony Express Grant Ganzi, and uh, they're ready for their next game, and um, so which will be against uh, Grand Champions Polo Club, which is uh, P.J. Rosecrans, uh, Ava Hinkson, Trevor uh, Nipsnick, and then uh, Jason Crowder. And uh, that was a close game. Audi 12-10, to 10, though. And Audi, uh, they mixed it up very well there. Everybody getting involved. This Audi team, they use a uh, very good team rotation. And uh, let's see how the second half uh, gets going here for uh, Raful. Picked up quickly by Guadenzi. And he will send it over to Bellarinelli, but uh, Martin Haregi, as you said uh, at the beginning of the, uh, the broadcast, Dale, very, very strong. And this time, Bellini getting caught on the right away uh, infringement as uh, Ganzi had firmly established him. Keep an eye on the man here with the number four in white. Coming down the line. Right there. Let me hit the turning call. So I dropped that one from the spot. Remember the turn. A lot of times they keep it from the spot. They'll move the key because of the possession. Juan actually had possession, but he's turning the ball in front of the oncoming player. So penalty 5A, Audi. Quickly taken. Now then, Gaudenzi. Yeah, he's going to go to the man. And that's uh, a nice pickup. A nice little touch there by Singh. But he won't get round uh, Bellini. Mark now needs to also clear and allow Bellini to make that play. And another whistle. We'll stop the action right in front of that goal mouth. You can see it here again. Bellini. This time, oh, this time, Juan waited to see what was going to happen. He knew, he knew Mark was hunting him there. So, and uh, Mark just kind of comes up from behind. So, penalty 5A, going the other way. And uh, that ball's got uh, Rebecca Cohen's name on it. Left behind for Dami Belladinelli. Oh, yes, he's got a run going on here. Caldenzi goes and tucks him behind, or does he? Belladinelli on his own, switches to the near side. Where is that next player in the uh, in the light blue or the turquoise colored shirts? Goes back to Belladinelli. He can just keep it within the boundaries of the field. Ganzi coming in for a challenge. Picked up now by Gaudenzi. He's going to try and drop that one in the danger zone. He was looking for either Rebecca Cohen and or Juan Bellini. He's going to try and also keep the ball in play, and he does very well by doing so. Still 
Raffle Polo. And a whistle. You come into a, a group right there, comes together. And I don't know if that ball was off the field. Did it go off the field? I think it might have just went off the field. Yeah, I think so. As they were kind of trying to work it in. So knock in coming for Team Audi. Martin going to drive on here. Looking for Milo or Mark. Yeah, he's found Mark. And those are the kind of balls he loves. Mark, of course, a World Polo League superstar and uh, winner. And uh, he's also mastered that one touch going flat out. Very well, Bellini, again, Mark, we've had this situation on a few occasions. Bellini now just uh, playing Tom and Jerry there with Ganzi. Turning it, well, he's lost it. In comes Gaudenzi, he steals it. I think uh, Cobra taking on two players here. We'll see, I mean, he kind of spun around here. Good steal by Mark and Tito. Gets in, by, gets in line there. So we'll see what the model officials decide. Looks like uh, bowling. Oh, Maybe no foul on the play. Uh huh. <laughs> Looks like um, kind of shot across there. And I like the bowling. Can really see from well, of course, you know we always have the the uh, ability to see things from different angles. I like the the good teamwork there by the three man team, as they are using two mountain officials and a third man from the sideline here for the uh, 2024 USPA Regional Presidents Cup. And. Um, so two umpires, when they disagree on a call, they check with third man. If not, they bowl in from the center of the boards. Little shot uh, on goal there, which just narrowly missed the goal by uh, Martin Haregi. So once again, knock in for Raful Polo. And again, Bellini just deciding what are his better or his best options. Yeah, I think this one was meant to go to, uh, to the front door there where Tito had put himself in a good position, just couldn't control the ball. But once again, the turnaround here, Singh trying to pick it up. Nice little pass, but it's Mr. Bellini. He's the one you need to get past. And that, uh, with all of his experience, you were saying, Dell, former eight goal player, not an easy feat to achieve. And that's uh, got a nice length on it here. Now then, can Rebecca Cohen pick it up? Uh, again, coming down the line. But this time the umpires are saying it's uh, no danger, no imminent danger. So Milo McDonough can continue, picks this one up on the near side. Gansey going up with him. In comes Singh. And now Martin Aregi leaving them all behind. And there the nice little layup pass for uh, Milo McDonough, who uh, opens his shoulders, takes a... A swing at it. Should have maybe calmed that down a little bit. I mean, he had nothing to lose and all the time in the world. So a pick up now by Raffle. And uh, Belladinelli gets it over the halfway line, but can he get past uh, Dig Singh? <clears throat> well done. Unlucky because Gaudenzi and uh, Cohen were going up, waiting for the ball. Bellini. And you see they turned, thinking they had to go back in defense. Nobody home. Audi able to uh, chase that ball from Bellini and turn defense into offense. Here we go, then. Nice ball up to the front. And uh, if Ganzi, which he does, picks this one up on the near side, he's got a bouncing ball. But Ganzi, oh, that's solid polo. Solid polo by the Cobra. Wow, yeah, that's very, very, very solid polo by the Cobra. This shot here on the near side that is a pitcher perfect play and then right here just nice easy swing as he was going so fast and uh well perfect play there by mark ganzi and uh 100 running the goal so with uh, a little under two minutes remaining ball is thrown into play here we go Audi win it again well you can see the umpires not wasting any time if you're not back on the halfway line when they throw in the ball it's game over and Gansy might get a second chance here or a second shot on goal Bellini comes in between Cohen 
Uh, gets a touch, gets another touch. Well done, Rebecca. Down comes the hammer on the near side now, Gaudenzi. And we know what a big hitter he is. He's going to run this one. Still Gaudenzi, but he runs into traffic. Yeah, with, uh, with Singh. In comes Milo. Turning it around, leaving... Oh, Belladinelli. Still, Dami Belladinelli. Has he found a little gap? Can he finish and take it all the way over the line? Well, he nearly did, but Haregi very quickly picking up and doing a bit of cleaning up there in the back on the front door. Sends it back up to the front where uh, Milo McDonough was waiting. And look at this good play here by Singh, tucking in nicely behind. But a whistle. So that ball's coming up down the field. See if uh, Milo doesn't get over the top of this. Yeah, right there. You see how Milo kind of yeah. came from yeah. right to left yeah. and um, took a play away from from uh, from Bellini. It looked like we'll see. We'll see what they do, but they decide on it as a uh, good shot there, Milo. And uh, his father, Pablo McDonough, coaching. Well, that's uh, always good have a 10 goaler as your coach always a good thing to have <laughs> i mean i think everybody should have one <laughs> you can get a few of those out there but uh, pablo he enjoys uh, he enjoys the coaching also as do most of the fathers and uh i guess uh let's see they decide no foul in the play so they're saying enough time there and they'll bowl that in from the center to the boards so down to the last uh 45 or so seconds remaining. Bellini, nice ball up for Belladinelli. Now then, vamos, dami. Yes, good touch. But he's put it out to the right-hand side. The under-the-neck attempt gets caught in a divot, bounces and goes over the back line. So uh, I think they'll probably uh, manage the clock here, and they should. Because time's going to run out on them. So when we, we return for our fifth chucker, we will start with a knock-in in favor of Team Audi. Stay with us. We'll be right back. When I founded the Taqueria 48 years ago, the goal was to service polo players field side and carry a complete line of polo equipment. Since those early days, we now carry everything for the horse and rider. Anything goes on or near a horse, you're likely to find here in our store. We still have polo equipment made by polo players for polo players. All right, here we go as we get ready for our fifth trucker and uh, USPA Regional President's Cup live from the Grand Canyon Pole Club field number four and uh, nine to three after the fourth trucker. We'll start this fifth trucker with a knock in in favor of Audi in the white jerseys, Team Audi with Mila McDonough, Tig Singh, Martin Haregi, and uh, Mark Ganzi. And uh, mixing it up today 
is we have uh, four goals by Martine, one from the penalty line, three from the field. Four goals by Mark Ganzi, one from the penalty line, three from the field. Another goal by Milo. And then Dig has been uh, working hard in the middle of the field with number two in his back on their side. Uh, only one goal. They had two goals on handicap, and then one goal by Juan Bellini on a, on a penalty four. Well hit, 60. <clears throat> and uh, otherwise, at the moment, Audi's been kind of controlling the the uh, pace and the, and the shots on goal. Is at halftime, like I said, they um, they had a lot of shots and uh, seven knock-ins for Raful, and it was eight to three. So. Very good, uh, very good, strong first half by Audi. Yep, and, and, uh, yep. and well, you have those, and you have those days, don't you, Dale? Where, where, um, and Raful, of course, if you look at the players, you know, I mean, there's a solid, solid players there, but you just have that sometimes where no, it's a new team, too. They, never, they haven't yeah. played together, they haven't played. I mean, Rebecca, it's good, great to see Rebecca also stepping up, one of our polo school graduates. Uh, play in here in some very strong eight goal polo. Yeah, this is the, uh, you know, it's, um, when you're coming out of the polo school. And then also, I believe it's first game for Dammy, Juan, and Tito playing, yeah. the, playing the. I know Juan and, and Tito have one game under their belt, but with Dammy, uh, Bella Donnelli just uh, his first game with uh, Tito, I believe. Yeah. He might have played with Juan somewhere um, over they He does play. Of course, and manage the victory polo team with the Schmites, Kevin and Becky, and uh, so he uh, he is in Aspen. They're out of Denver, but they do play in Aspen at the Aspen Valley Polo Club during the summer, July and August. AspenValleyPoloClub.com, and um, remember to uh, if you want to play polo in the summer. Also, if you're interested in the polo school. It is uh, in session at the beautiful Ashman Valley Polo Club and the Polo on Demand program, which is um, used at a very high level, very unique program where uh, whatever you uh, demand, may, may it be a polo stick and ball session with the polo school representatives or a uh, play in a 20 goal. And uh, come in and be mounted with a full team, horses, and uh, at a very high level. So uh, we've uh, we've seen the Polo on Demand program being used in ver at uh, various uh, degrees here this winter at the Grand Champions Polo Club. We have a uh, timeout right now, Yan, as they're waiting for an umpire horse. And people ask us about that. The umpires... They are mounted, and uh, they're all, there are always two on the field. Sometimes you'll see one, and uh, depending on the polo. But uh, they do change horses at halftime, and yeah, which of course makes uh, makes sense. Uh, the uh, the umpires need to uh, also get a, uh, on a fresh set of legs. Uh, I'd also like to um, welcome somebody who I believe is watching us and listening to us uh, over in. Europe, of course, uh, a warm welcome to everyone who is uh, tuned into Chucker TV. But uh, greetings to uh, Nicole, who I know uh, she's just written uh, watching from Frankfurt in Germany, enjoying the action here this morning. Oh, wow. Thank you, Nicole. And also, I want to uh, I'll bring us up to speed because I had the opportunity to talk to one of our field side correspondents. Yeah. And also, uh, our, uh, our, I, uh, our group in here at CTV Sports. The last foul was not. Um, was not a foul. I, I we were talking about. It. I said it possibly it was it was uh, the umpires saw it differently, and there was no foul on the play, and that's why they bowled it in. And actually, it was offsetting penalties. Gotcha. So we had where we had a foul, where we had a player riding over the top of the ball, and then you had an appeal by one of the opposing teams, and uh, in the process, you have one foul by one team. You have the uh, appeal. Which at the, in this case it wasn't a verbal appeal; it was a mallet, uh, twirling the mallet, and so they offset those and they bowl the ball in. So, so a good call by the mount officials. So make sure that you uh, are always getting the right uh, info. And uh, great job by the three-man team working today. 
We're not using replay in the uh, USPA Regional President's Cup challenge system, I should say, or the triggers. They are uh, using the three-man team, umpires LLC. And um, you see all different styles, of course, at different levels of the game. And uh, like I said, four teams playing cross-bracket setup. And, uh, you know, the winners will battle against each other to see who uh, goes make, through. Yeah, who goes through and, and plays at the MPC. Here we go then. Umpire on a fresh uh, pony. And uh, here we go then. Chucker number five. Gaudenzi with a nice ball out to the left-hand side to feed that one up to Rebecca Cohen. Good first touch from Rebecca. Well done, Rebecca Cohen. In comes uh, Bella Dinelli to uh, pick up what uh, Rebecca started. And Bella Dinelli will pick up the second goal here, Dale. So uh, clearly some stern words having been spoken in that last uh, little interval because uh, Raffle coming out very strongly at the top of the fifth chucker. Yeah, it's what they want. They need to come out. A lot of time left. And actually Rebecca in a good spot there if needed in the rumble seat and we'll get uh tournament conditions international rules tournament commission get all the balls bowled in right here in front of you with our uh, center cam picked up again now by tito so godenzi here for the rafu polo giving back to bellini now then godenzi will go up there's the pass but is he going to be quick enough? Because uh, you can see that uh, McDonough got there first, but uh, well done, Dami Bella Dinelli, and he nearly picking up goal, back-to-back -back goals here. Very unlucky as he just put that one wide. Yeah, no, they need every opportunity they can get. As, uh, as we were saying, well, about the Audi team this year in the high goal, remember every time they have the ball, the possession is so big. And uh, working very similar here in the eight goal here in the USPA Regional President's Cup and uh, time possession of controlling the ball. And if you don't, if you, just, you need to have the ball if you're going to score goals. So they need to push the press and try to get control. It's going to be picked up here, taken away, and controlled now by Dami. So Belladinelli, all of a sudden on a bit of a run here, leaves that one for Bellini. Bellini will again be looking up to see what his options are. Milan McDonough staying with him. And looks like Bellini's got a bit of a tack issue there. Oh, his, his, his saddle is coming off. Or his uh, stirrup leather. They stopped the action right there. Milo. And uh, we'll make sure Juan is... He is organized. He is taking some time to fix his, it looks like his, I want to say it's his stirrup leather. And of course, stirrup leather is the piece of equipment that hooks to your stirrup. And uh, the issue with that is when that breaks, or if it does, man, it could be, uh, be a pretty bad injury on the, on the uh, two-legged athlete, the rider, of course, because it pulls, you can pull that if it does, you pull that riding muscle. <clears throat> so make sure uh, you can see, I mean, it looks like maybe like Juan's got a little cramp or something there. So we'll take time out, injury time out with 5.04 on the clock, make sure the Bellini is okay. And I think they're going to go with the possession. Yeah, they're going to go with a fair play possession based on the uh, on the tack uh, injury timeout. So back to Rafulin. Look at this, Tito. Yeah, on the move, Gaudenzi. Would be nice to see him get on the score sheet as well. But again, a deflection sends it out uh, not that far. Bellarinelli up against uh, the six goaler. Gaudenzi coming back to uh, to support. In comes uh, Bellandinelli. Deflection, but I think that ball... No, it was still in play. I thought it might have just uh, trickled over the back line. And uh, 
Away we go. Audi revving up that engine again. Haoregi just holding back before unloading a shot because nobody up front to play it to. This has got uh, Singh, Singh's name on it. Dick Singh was, uh, I think, supposed to be the uh, recipient of that ball. Haoregi <clears throat> drills another pass downfield. Looking for Ganzi. He's found him. And Ganzi, he's been absolutely unstoppable in these sort of situations. His fifth goal of the game. Cobra striking again. Yep. On the uh, breakaway play. Huge pass. Gets uh, Mark out in front. And this is a, this is Mark's uh, comfort zone at uh, all season. Right in between that, six, that uh, 40 and 60 yard line. He picks the ball up. And uh, he has been spectacular and on the finishes this season. And uh, so that's going to keep it in there. They're going to uh, keep that six-goal lead here with uh, they click under 320. Now then, the answer imminent possibly here from Belladinelli. Didn't quite get the finish. Seeing again with a nice little clearance uh, back shot, but only as far as McDonough. And uh, he's only not only a young player, but he's also a very, very clever player. And, of course, as you said, Dale, having a 10-goal father um, always helps. So yeah. coaching, coaching him at every moment he gets down there, Pablo. And look at this. Mark on the move again. Yeah, who's behind? It will be uh, Milo and uh, Dami, who stops and turns. Nicely done. Now, who has he got? as an option to play it to. He's going to have to possibly chase his own ball. Here we go, the pass. Didn't quite go where he wanted. Third time lucky. Takes a shot. Gaudenzi. Beg your pardon, Rebecca Cohen. We've got three pink helmets out there, so do apologize. Gaudenzi is now on the ball. He's going to leave that one. That's a gentleman. If ever I saw one, well done and thank you. Very much appreciated, Cardenzi, allowing Rebecca Cohen to pick up her first goal of the match. Yeah, nice play, actually, because uh, this was kind of set up perfect because Tito secured the right of way yeah. there. Yeah. And uh, and um, with uh, Martin Haregi seeing that, uh, gave Rebecca time to come around and get the finish. Well done, Rebecca. And uh, well done, Tito. So... 10 to 5. They are still very much alive here, but only a minute and 40 remain in the penultimate fifth chucker. Remember, there will be a sixth chucker, but uh, let's, whilst we wait for that ball to be thrown in, remind you of what is coming up this afternoon. Grand Champions Field Number 2 live on CTV Sports, the much anticipated final of the Palm Beach Open. Defending champions Casablanca. Uh, we spoke about them earlier. We'll be taking on uh, Traviesa oh, whilst, wow, oh, my goodness, wow. Milo McDonough. Well. Wow. That's uh, with a capital W. Wow. Watch this. This ball gets off to the right side. It's not exactly where Milo wanted it to be, but he doesn't. Uh, <laughs> Superb. Yeah, it doesn't rattle him at all. He just sets up perfectly, and you can watch that when he sets up there. <clears throat> Once again, Milo. Riding over the top of the ball. Yeah. So he's not hitting the ball from the right side of the pony. He's riding over the top of it to get that angle. Hits it right inside the near post. Sensational so, finish. Absolutely. That was a 10 goal play any day of the week. Here we go then. Audi ex uh, extending their lead or keeping that six goal uh, cushion still very much alive. Rebecca Cohen getting a. A few more touches now here in the uh, penultimate fifth uh, chucker. I think uh, Audi, of course, can be, and rightly so, very confident with the work that they've done up until now. Gaudenzi coming in to get the ball off the boards. But uh, he's got uh, Bellini to clear things up nicely as uh, that ball will go over the back line, and that will bring us to the end of chucker number five. Make sure you stay with us for the sixth and final chucker of this USPA Regional President's Cup when we return.
Another great season. We had a blast this year. Great fields again. They keep getting better and better. And we got lucky with the rain this year and uh, had a lot of fun polo. There's nothing better than being out here in Aspen, playing with these great people, amazing views every day. I mean, how could you ask for more? Best part about being out here in Aspen for the polo is the fields, the community, Melissa and Mark, the great competition, and, uh, and the amazing horses, and how the horses enjoy being out here. I love the town, I love the valley, I love also spending time here in Carbondale. Um, so I just love this place in general. I have a lot of friends. I've made lots of friends over the years. The Gansis has have created a spectacular place here uh, that has become a really important summer destination for polo in America. Aspen, I love it that our family's around, a ton of horses, a ton of golf, and a lot of fun polo. So. Once again, a warm welcome and uh, welcome back on this uh, Sunday morning here. You join us now for the sixth and final chakra of the USPA Regional Presidents Cup 2024. Audi, as uh, you've been rightly saying, Dale, they have been in control of this game from the get go. Remember, Raffel Polo coming into this game with uh, two goals on handicap, but uh, it took them, uh, well, the better part of uh, two and a half chakras before they got the first goal. Uh, which was scored by Juan Bellini from the line, a penalty four. And then again, it wasn't until the fifth chucker when we saw a very nice goal by Rebecca Cohen and a goal by Dami Belladinelli uh, to bring it up to five goals to ten. But then a very nice finish from uh, Milo McDonough made it 11 goals to five. That's how... Uh, and that's how we stand at the moment. That's where you join us. And uh, let's see if Belladinelli can do what he did in that last chuck. And it looks like he does. Well done, uh, Dami Belladinelli, picking up his second goal of this match. Yeah, nice pick up here. Looked like I thought uh, Martino was going to go for the hook. Then he fell in behind. And then good ball control by Dami to get to his uh, second of the day. And uh, they got to keep going here. Still plenty every, of time. Yeah, every possession is big though now. With the time clicking down, down by down by five. Picked up by Bellini. He'll take around the outside of the entire crowd of players. It'll pass up to the front door. Intended for Gaudenzi, but uh, Aregi will get there just a little bit quicker. Little chip shot over to uh, the Cobra. Absolute precision. And uh, yeah, Mark likes those. He likes those perfect place balls, preferably when he's running, going flat out. I remember a couple of weeks ago, he took a he took a ball that came to him on the... I mean, he was literally flying. It was one touch, the ball came, and he scored. So, uh, and again... How Reggie doing a very good job in feeding him exactly with these balls. That ball just uh, going out of bounds. <clears throat> so here he is, Martin Hauregi. You're mixing up well today using, uh, like I said, getting Milo up in front and dig, working hard in the center, and then Mark coming through. Mark scoring uh, five, four from the field and one from the penalty line. But this is what uh, Dig's been doing well. These little ride-offs and working hard with the center of the field. And uh, that's what Audi will need to win that, win that, um, to go on and keep winning. You know, you're getting that whole, that team, um, team strategy. And because um, we, didn't, we didn't get, I think Milo, yeah, Milo didn't score any goals in the last game. And we are talking about getting more involved. Dig scored. They mm -hmm. had the two, but now seeing Milo pulling the team a little bit, now you're adding that extra offensive attack. Nice ball for Rebecca Cohen. Unlucky Rebecca. Again, she finds herself, and she does such a great job always getting exactly where she needs to be. 
uh, finishing, just uh, not 100%. But again, another notch of experience under her belt. And uh, I'm sure she'll be putting those away in future. Yeah. She, uh, she played very well in the WCT. Yeah, she did. You know, you can see a different level. Maybe she's, yeah. Re Rebecca has been, been um, as she's been advancing from the polo school into the six and now playing some eight, but doing a great job with the WCT also, Sunny Hill Legacy. And uh, so doing a good job. And she, can she I think I called last minute, right? Coming here for Ray, because Ray, Ray's been playing. And uh, so not doing a bad job. On the move, picked up here, Tito. And that's what Diggs been doing well. Yeah, very well. Working very, hard. Very well. Well. She's going to chase him down right now, too, keeping the pressure on Bellini. Loose ball plays. They take it in. Bellini gets it actually over the top of everybody and then sneaks around the group. Getting a lob wedge here. And it's a little bit short for Rebecca. But Juan was in a good spot, picks up his own pass, and finishes it off. And now 11 to 7. And we'll see a good shot here of Dig saying as he changes ponies. I think uh, actually working with the Polo on Demand program. Players coming back here. So they all got to get back on side. A few players that were changing. And it will be picked up here, taken by Mark. And that's what Gansey's been doing well today. Cobra, well done. Well, not only well done, Dale, it's absolute 100% consistency. A goal in every single chucker. That's his sixth goal uh, of the match, making it a full dozen. So well done, Mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he's been on it. He's been on it every chucker, like you said. And... Uh, Pretty similar runs. Yeah. Straight down the pipe. So good good, good shooting, good scoring. And out the backside is going to be Milo. Now then, it would be nice if he could pick up another goal too. That uh, last goal he scored was absolutely top draw. Uh, he gets past Rebecca Cohen. Good ball control. You can see he's already eyeing up that goal mouth. He might just leave it behind. Now he's got two players. There comes the attempted under the neck. Deflects off the pony of uh, Bellini, I think. And uh, Bellardinelli coming in for a challenge, but he's still got the ball. Young Milo McDonough. Now Bellini has the right of way. Dig knows that as well. And uh, Bellini, again, looking at his options, where he can play it to. Wants to drag that ball a little bit further away from his goal mouth here. Then the big pass as we come to the one-minute mark. Again, nicely played for uh, Be Rebecca Cohen. Unfortunately, overrides. Picked up on the near side by uh, Milo. He will send it back. Dami Belladinelli trying to control it. And again, Dixon gives it to Milo. Milo now, can he run? Mark Tetch uh, taking out the, uh, the, the only defender. Milo over on the far side. Lots of space, lots of time. Checks up. Now does a little bit of stick and balling. Working it very well. Still Milo. Oh, what a great finish. Milo yeah. McDonough. Yeah, you can see he's in the groove now. <clears throat> and that's all he needs, more touches. And just staying very composed, not worrying about it, collecting his pony nicely. Nice approach, yeah. perfect, perfect finish. Goal number three for Milo. And I think that's going to run us out. Indeed it is. So any final word? Congratulations to Audi. It was a master class, but let's have a quick look at the stats. Better look at Rafu better. Yeah. On, on the shots on goal, 14. Uh, Remember, it was like uh, 15 to 5, I think. And uh, so that's a lot better. I mean, that very clean game by both teams. Only six fouls committed by both teams. And uh, with those final uh, stats, we'd like to remind you, of course, to join the CTV Sports. I'll be at the stadium. Dale, of course, will be here. And I believe we do have a special guest. So make sure you tune in for that. CTV Sports, 4 o'clock, the final of the Palm Beach Open. We got it for you, Anna and Frank. I'm Dale Schwetz. I speak for everyone here at CTV Sports. I want to say thank you for making us leaders in polar broadcasting. And always remember here at CTV Sports, we love the polo.